When you transmit a signal, a signal received will be subjected to distortion from signal noise, crosstalk, and other undesired effects. This is why you need to incorporate design and manufacturing practices to limit such effects and increase signal integrity. Via stubs often contribute to a decrease in signal integrity, which can be resolved through the use of the back drilling process. In this image, you can see a cross-sectional view of via. Here, the signal is transmitted from the second layer to the fourth layer. You can observe that from the fifth layer to the bottom layer, there are no connections. The portion of the via from the fifth layer to the bottom layer is called the via stub. In the back drilling, the main objective is to remove the via stub portion. The finished hole can be seen here. The hatched portion represents the back drill diameter. The back drill diameter is larger than the original drill size called oversize. As per Sierra standards, the back drill via should be 10 mil larger than the original drill size and should have a clearance of 10 mils from the other vias and structures. Now let us go over how to set up the back drill. We are choosing the Ethernet section here, and within the Ethernet section, we are choosing the RX segment. Before we take up routing, we need to carry out the back drill setup. Go to Design, then Layer Stackup Manager. Over here, we need to add the back drill via. To do that, click the Feature tab at the top right corner of the screen. Within the drop down list that is displayed, select the feature named Back Drills. After that, at the bottom left portion of the screen, select the Back Drill tab. Once you click that, the Back Drill options are displayed. This is where you'll get to add the various Back Drill parameters. By clicking on the Plus tab, you can add more Back Drills. You can also use the Delete option, shown with a bin symbol, to delete Back Drills you don't require. In the Layer Stackup Manager, you can select the first and last layers in the Properties panel on the left side. Here we are selecting the top layer as the first layer and the fifth layer as the last layer. You can see that the back drill figure will also change to reflect your selection of the first and last layers. Now save your work in the Layer Stack Manager and click Close. Next, go to Design and click on Net Classes. This will open the Object Class Explorer window. Then right click on Net Classes and select Add Class in the drop down menu. Now you need to name the class as Backdrill. Now you need to add the nets which need Backdrill vias. We will select the Ethernet RX nets and click on the greater than symbol to add the nets as members for the Backdrill operation. Click OK. Next, you need to set up the stub length and the oversized parameters. Go to Design, then click Rules. The PCB Rules and Constraints editor will be displayed. Select High Speed and click Maximum Stub Length. Click the New Rule tab at the bottom of the window. The back drilling rule is then added. Now double click the rule to set the required values. We are going to keep the stub length at 15 mil. This is the oversize of the back drill, which we will set as 10 mil. The tolerance will be set as plus and minus 3 mil. After this, select the net class and then select back drill. Click Apply, then OK. The next step is to perform the required routing. Once the routing is done, we need to check if the back drills have been set properly. To check the same, switch on all layers. You can see that the circumference of the vias is displayed with dual colors. In this case, the red color indicates the first layer, or start layer, and the blue color indicates the last layer, or stop layer. You can clearly see the difference between the back drilled vias and the other vias. Only the back drilled vias show up in dual colors. To view how many vias, PTH, and other holes have been drilled, select the Place option from the main menu and click Drill Table. You can select and view vias according to their properties using the property option and selecting the required layer pair. Here you can see the drill count is 12, hole size is 30 mil, the type of plated hole is NPTH, and the drill hole tolerance as well. Here are some advantages of back drilling. Via stubs give rise to a signal distortion issue named 
deterministic jitter. Backdrilling reduces deterministic jitter. Jitter with regard to signal transmission in a PCB refers to timing errors caused by EMI, signal crosstalk, and noise. Deterministic jitter is jitter that can be defined within the minimum and maximum variations. Another advantage, it reduces signal attenuation because of enhanced impedance matching, mitigated EMI, EMC radiation from the stub, reduced excitation of resonance modes, decreased via-to-via -via crosstalk.